week, I'm taking the Ravens. I'm going to take the Ravens. Um, I love it. To me, I've been saying this all year, and the Lions have been I, – I didn't say anything negative about the Lions, but I said that they have to prove consistency because they're a team that hasn't found historical success. So now you're the Lions at 5-1, and one, and I believe the Ravens are what, 4-2? and two? Um. So wait, so the Lions are four five and I, one. They might be five and one. Are they? Five I and think one? the Lions are five and five one. Five and one, yeah. Five and, and one. I, Ravens I believe are four the Ravens are four and two. Yeah. To me, this is the perfect scenario where we see every single year in the NFL where you have a team on the rise, like the Lions are five and one. They're playing great, and it's nothing really against them. But you're playing an established team, the Ravens, who, in my opinion, are not even in my opinion. It's just the truth. Are one of the iconic franchises in the NFL who have one of the best coaches and one of the best quarterbacks, the Lions are going to lose this game. The, the Ravens need it more. The Ravens, if they fall to four and three, you're kind of playing catch up in the AFC right now, given how well the a, all the AFC teams are playing. So the Ravens need this one more. And for that reason, I'm going to go with them to beat the Lions. And David Montgomery being out, as you said, is a major reason as to why I'm doing so. Yeah. And, and what I was going to say there at the, at the end of that was that the Lions, even without, you know, their running back, uh, their main running back. And if Gibbs even, if he doesn't play, I still like their weapons on uh, their receiving core and their tight end. Laporte yeah. has been phenomenal. Uh, Laporte has He's been so everything. Good. He's been everything Mark Andrews hasn't been. Uh, Jamison Williams is back and he caught a touchdown last week. Hasn't done much, but he caught a touchdown last week. And I think he's ready to start exploding yeah, off. He just I mean, needs some time. He needs some time. Exactly. And, and then uh, on the other side, I mean, Amin Ra is, is phenomenal. Uh, Josh Reynolds is good. You know, uh, Khalif Raymond, they have so many, they have so many good position players. People forget. So, uh, it's going to be up to that O-line. I think they're going to win in the yeah. trenches. If that O-line can provide some push for Craig Reynolds, Gibbs, if he plays, we're going to see some exciting stuff in that game. So that's, that's going to be a fun game to watch. Maybe game of the week, honestly. It might be. It might uh, be. commanders at giants. The giants are two and a half point underdogs at home. 37 and a half is the over under, uh, give me the commanders. I just think the Giants are just so flat. This this is just a red flag of a year for them. You know, complete alarms, fire the they're alarms. In a, they're in a similar situation as the Pats, except they Dables, just paid their quarterback. They just paid their quarterback, and <laughs> yeah. Dable isn't going anywhere. Uh-huh. I, I really can't see Dable getting fired. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the. You know what? No, I'm gonna go with the Giants. I'm gonna take the Giants. Um, I don't think that highly of the Commanders. I think they fight. Uh, I think they play hard. But the Giants kind of showed me something last week. They showed a little bit of grit that, you know, I don't think a 1-5 in five team should have. They showed much more heart and compete than the Pats did. Um, mm. I mean, that's obvious. The Pats literally just don't try anymore. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I, I I think the Giants showed something last week. I thought I thought Terod played very well. Um, I thought he looked great. Is Danny Dimes playing this week? I don't think it's confirmed yes or, yes or no, but I think I, thought, I think it's trending towards Tyrod. I thought they responded much better to Tyrod than they did to Danny Dimes, uh, than they have all year. And I think he brings a certain kind of edge to them that Danny Dimes hasn't. I, I mean, think, yeah, I to mean, me, it... I saw Taylor out there, and it looked like he wanted it way more than Danny Dimes has all year. It looks like Daniel Jones is fat and happy off that contract, and Tyrod Taylor – is coming in trying to fight for a job in the NFL again. That's exactly yeah. what it looked like to me. Is is there something to be said for Daniel Jones getting that huge contract? Many of many people, including us, thinks you know he got overpaid. Obviously, he wanted that much. He got paid, whatever. Is there something there where the team is like they know deep down they've seen him in oh, practice they know every day. He's not they're the like guy. they know he's like not all the right. Guy. We just paid this guy all this money. He's not doing anything for us right now. Yeah, you know. You didn't pay Saquon when he was the whole offense. Yeah, no, and, 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 I, and he's probably out of the door. Right. So now you get and you give Daniel Jones the money. I mean, there's probably some there. I mean, there could be, there could be some trouble in the locker room. You know, that it's no, a real I, thing. And I um, I'm so happy that you brought up the Saquon element to it because it's not just that Daniel Jones got paid; it's that Saquon didn't, and at least yeah. didn't when he should have been. Um. But Saquon, you can't. You can't trick NFL players. You, you hear it all the time. You hear ex players on ESPN or FS1, and they always say you can't trick the locker room. No matter how much a GM or a coach tries to with a player that they favor or whatnot, you can't trick a locker room. You heard the same thing. I'm not saying Daniel Jones is Tim Tebow because God knows that fucking Daniel Jones is far better than Tim Tebow ever was. <laughs> but maybe everyone, not at baseball. 
Oh, I think I'm better than <laughs> Tim Tebow at baseball. Um, <laughs> but everyone on that team knows that the only reason they made the playoffs last year was because of Brian Dable and Saquon Barkley. And I should have said Saquon Barkley first because he was more responsible for it than Brian Dable, regardless of how much of a great job he did. Mm-hmm. But everyone sees their leader, their best player, uh, their franchise player, not getting ta- not getting taken care of. And the quarterback who, in all honesty, got carried – He did get taken care of. So I'm sure there is a sense of backstabbing, a sense of a lack of loyalty in that room. So I think you hit it on the head. 